course, um, nobody will forget where they were on 9-11. On That's 10 years ago. And th those were difficult times, especially for those of us who were trying to explain exactly what 9-11 was all about. But immediately afterwards, there was a fair amount of legislation that came up. The, fir the first bill that came to the floor to rectify these problems that uh, existed wasn't to address foreign policy or exactly asking questions, why do people commit suicide terrorism? Where did these people actually come? Uh, certainly wasn't Iraq. They didn't ask that. They said, what we need to do is pass the Patriot Act. Which makes no sense. If they wouldn't, if, I talked to one member of Congress when we wrote on I says, why are you voting for this? You haven't even had a chance to read it, and it has some terrible stuff in there. He says, how can I not vote for the Patriot Act under these circumstances? How could I go home and explain it? I says, well, that's what your job is. <laughs> But almost every bill in Congress has a title to it which is exactly opposite of what it, of what it does. And this is a perfect example because I think if it, were, if it had been properly named, it would have been called Repeal the Fourth Amendment Act. And most likely they would have had a difficult time passing that piece of legislation. But how in the world can attacking your freedoms in initiating this uh, attack on our privacy, search warrants, uh, searches without search warrants, all the way down, which more or less establish what we have to go through at airports, why we are suspected terrorists uh, without probable cause and we're treated that way, why if you're involved in the monetary issue, you might well be charged as a terrorist and it's just the term is thrown around. And how in the world will passing the Patriot Act make us safer with, without an understanding of what's going on in the world? And it's an attack on our personal liberties. So it is liberty that is the cause. That is why we continue to campaign for liberty. That's why this organization is so important. It's to change people's mind and to change the political situation in Washington or locally. I am astounded at what's happened since the last campaign, the last election period, with the campaign for liberty going around the country. I meet people uh, that ran for office. I don't think we've counted them all, the different offices they want in state legislatures around the country, even here in, in Florida, some have run and won. But they're, they're numerous. So that is, that is where the encouragement comes from, because the ideas are alive and well. Yes, we have terrible problems. Yes, they've undermined our liberties. But we still have some left. We're still in this room. We still have the opportunity to elect different people in Washington. And run, right now, we have a tremendous opportunity because the evidence is crystal clear that the views of the last century almost, at least 70 years on, 80 years on foreign policy and monetary policy, the evidence is in. They have failed. And our views are now appropriate to be put in place. And we must remember that armies can't stop an idea whose time has come. And I believe our ideas, our time has come. <laughs> the country is waking up due to all the evidence that we see, the political uh, landscape is changing. They're desperately struggling for that uh, one single candidate that will capture the uh, all of America can, can represent the status quo. But it doesn't look like they're finding one very easy, which opens up the door for us. I really believe it. But the great strides have been made at the grassroots, the Tea Party movement, and the changes going on. This is all beneficial. And there's a good reason why the Tea Party movement arose. And it isn't so much that we know 
who's in the Tea Party and exactly what the beliefs are. There's no one Tea Party movement. I, I think I remember when it really got started back in 2007, though. <laughs> But there was a need, uh, there was a necessity for a group of people to stand up and, and, and tell it the way it is and speak out against this party system that we have. We don't have a two-party system. We have a single-party system. Just think, just think of how much doesn't change regardless of which party. Does medical care pro uh, programs change with Republicans versus the Democrats? Does monetary policy change? Does the entitlement sy system change? Does foreign policy change? No, they endorse the same ideas. They've been taught by the same people. But what's happening in the country now is this standing up and saying, yes, we can't get their attention, but we don't have the opportunity to do it in a third party. I, I am always annoyed by the fact that we know what one of the excuses has been for us to go overseas, which I just don't, uh, I, I just think it's a real stretch of their imagination. We're overseas to spread our goodness and spread democracy at the point of a gun. So we're going over, killing a lot of people, a lot of our people get, getting killed, and we're spreading democracy in the world. At the same time, our democratic process, and uh, not democracy, but our democratic process where we can elect and have different competing parties, it's virtually impossible. It's so difficult. I tried it once. I spent most of my money trying to get on ballots. And how many interviews do you think I got? How many in the debates? It doesn't happen. So this is the reason there was, a, there was a need and there was a vacuum. Something had to be done. And that's when I think people finally got so incensed and they followed up with what was happening in 07. And uh, there's been this spontaneous movement. Of course, I have to admit there have been a few that have come over to join and get some of the benefits from the Tea Party movement as well. But nevertheless, I think it's very, very healthy. But our job is to help define that movement and how many people are upset. And I think that's what Campaign Liberty has been doing and we will continue to do because we know and understand what liberty means. And we know that it means personal liberty. We know it means a different foreign policy and we know it means a different monetary policy and certainly it means a different economic policy. And we take the oath of office very seriously. But this is where the progress has been made. And at the universities, young people a lot of times uh, represent any significant change. And if we had no young people and if the campuses were dead and totally uninterested in what we were doing, I would be very discouraged. And uh, yet today, this is the place where we get a lot of attention. This Young Americans for Liberty organization as an outgrowth from... It's an outgrowth of the Campaign for Liberty, and uh, Jeff Frazee has done a magnificent job, and he's literally getting hundreds and hundreds of organized individuals around on the campuses. I believe that's very significant. And uh, the, the people now have access to so much more information. I struggled when I decided in the 1950s there was a lot I am not getting and I don't fully understand. I'm looking for information and I was trying to figure out the plain truth of these things and it wasn't that easy. Um, I certainly didn't learn it in college, but just the, the desire to find it motivated me to keep looking. No internet, you didn't hear it on TV, you didn't get it from your politicians, you don't get it from the professors, so where do you get it? You, have to, you had to get it elsewhere, and it was in books. And I give a lot of credit back in those years to how the Foundation for Economic Education helped me, because that, it was back in the day when there were so few people trying to keep it together. But that was part of a remnant. There's always a remnant in society that holds things together. And, and they were a part of the remnant. We still don't know where and how big the remnant is, but I'll tell you what, I get to meet a few in the remnant, and it's a lot bigger than I ever dreamed it was. So there were a few of us and a few organizations, but now they have blossomed. They have blossomed and they've actually invaded the universities, the conventional universities, the professors that are getting into the colleges that have, have, are associated with the Mises Institute and other free market uh, organizations. 
this is magnificent what's happening. And uh, this, to me, makes the big difference. And then, again, the dissemination of information, whether it's pure political information or educational information, it comes through the Internet. It's magnificent. It's a real tool. So there's reason to be very concerned. I am talking about and believe sincerely, although I do not claim to be a prognosticator and claim that I know when things would happen. I think good economic thinking tells you that printing money, your dollar loses value and a few things like that. But I think things are going to be much worse less next summer. I think the dollar is in a crisis. I think that's what the price of gold is telling us. And it's pervasive. It's around the world. It's the biggest bubble ever. All, current, all other countries use dollars in their reserves. So this is not going to be one country. It's not going to be just Greece. It's not going to be just the United States. Everybody has to face up to this. And this is why people are rushing into something that they can fully trust. Even putting money in the bank doesn't help anymore because they're talking about charging you to put your money in the bank. There's a lot of paper money and money floating around, but nobody has any confidence. And this is a sign that something big is coming on. This week, we saw that, we saw that the uh, consumer price index was going up at 0.5%, which means it's going up 0.1%. It's going up twice as fast as the government tells you. And uh, housing prices this week are continuing, uh, the housing sales are continuing once again to go down. But interestingly enough, if you look at the prices of houses in the last three months, they've been creeping up. That means that all things of real value eventually will have, there will be a need for those things, and I think that is what's happening. And uh, we have this opportunity to use all these issues because the world is changing, the attitudes are changing, the understanding is changing, and there's a lot of room to be very optimistic about our opportunities. But as bad as things are, um, it's, it, will not, it will not be easy. But we're much better off than I say we were five or ten years ago. Uh, many of us were concerned at that time, but uh, the evidence wasn't in yet. But the evidence is in now, and they know that these problems are here, so we're being so much more better received uh, because of this. But freedom is the answer. Bringing people together, I, am, uh, I, I feel so emphatically positive about the benefits of liberty and I don't, I don't uh, shy away ever from somebody saying, yes, I don't care about people, because it's only the free society that cares about people. And that is what we have to convince people of.